Hello, welcome back. We are nearing to the final few classes of this course and that is metals in biology. We are trying to summarize little bit quickly so that you can study these for exam purpose relatively easily. What we have seen in case of the iron oxygen intermediates that they are very capable of doing oxygenation chemistry, some of them are oxygenases, some of them are oxidases, right. But more importantly almost every organic substrate can be functionalized by utilizing the iron oxygen chemistry. This chemistry can be uh, between the two iron center between the oxo species is bridged in between or it could be as fascinating as those the terminal oxo species or these porphyrin oxo based species. There are non heme oxo based species as you have also seen, but these species are also known to be very very effective. So, you have seen these many different types of reaction hydroxylation, oxidative ligand transfer, desaturation, cyclization, electrophilic aromatic substitution and cis dihydroxylation reaction. All these reactions you are hopefully now familiar with, Not, most of them are going via the radical mechanism as you can see in there. This one where arene activation is involved or arene oxygenation is involved, it is going through an electrophilic aromatic substitution reaction. The cis dihydroxylation can be mediated by this oxo hydroxy species to form this from this in extremely exciting products. All these cases uh, this is um, this oxo radical formation and corresponding the CH bond activation and, and the radical formation is key and that is what we have seen over the many many different high valent iron oxo intermediate cases. One of the exciting species you perhaps would remember as well that the alpha ketoglutarate dependent enzyme are capable of doing both the oxygenation chemistry as well as the halogenation chemistry depending on the slight changes they have in their coordination motif. But nonetheless they will be having this alpha ketoglutarate as an internal substrate for their activity. So, what you have seen earlier with the alpha ketoglutarate dependent enzyme is simply it, it binds with the non heme iron center and oxygen activation that takes place at the iron center before that the substrate will orient itself get it ready get set go and then oxygen will start uh, gets activated at the iron center it first form a iron 3 superoxo which immediately is trapped or attacked attacking the uh, keto moiety of the alpha keto glutarate the alpha keto center is getting uh, reacted with forming an alkyl peroxide like intermediate which can then undergo oxygen oxygen bond cleavage to give rise to these iron 4 oxo species. These are reactive intermediate and the substrate is sitting right close to it therefore the oxo will abstract hydrogen atom to form the hydroxo and the R radical right. This R radical and hydroxyl radical can combine with each other to give the ROH. Once again this uh, water molecule goes out alpha ketoglutarate comes in RH takes it position gets set perfectly oxygen comes in forms the iron 3 superoxo iron 2 plus was there it forms iron 3 plus it forms the superoxo this superoxo attack the alpha keto center to form this cyclic nice intermediate where it is now uh, now iron 4 thanks to the uh, nucleophilic attack on this keto center which which is then uh, getting O minus by transferring one electron from the iron center oxidizing is to iron 4 plus from iron 3 plus right. Now this iron 4 plus uh, alkyl peroxo type of intermediate can undergo the oxygen oxygen bond cleavage wherever whatever way you want to see it with the ex simultaneous expulsion of the CO2 moiety it gives rise to the succinate bound the iron 4 oxo intermediate which is the real active species for abstracting hydrogen atom from the sp3 ch bond right over here this is nothing but you can see that iron 3 o dot this o dot and uh, this rh will form the bond uh, or form this um, iron 3 oh bond and r r dot radical will be generated during the process. So, I am sure you are having a clear understanding uh, among these uh, different OH and O bond. Uh, for instance, if you have seen earlier 
this cupril species for example. So, we are saying that cupril is nothing but CO2O dot, this is exactly same as CO3 double bond O because this will give electron that will give electron to form that. Similarly, for example, if we are talking about iron 4 oxo species, this is also nothing but going to be iron 3, these are same species in different form one can write iron 3 O dot. Now, this as you have seen in the last slide, these iron iron 4 oxo was reacting with R H okay, to give you what? To give you iron 3 O H. How that is happening? Because this iron 4 oxo is nothing but iron 3 O dot and if you are giving R H to this, this is forming R dot, this is forming H dot and these two bonds. So, overall you get iron 3 O H plus R dot, hopefully this is clear. On the other hand over here if you want to draw it is nothing but this bond is breaking and then that is giving and that is forming the R dot. So, that is R dot. In any case whether you want to think that iron 4 oxo is a double bond O iron or, or it is a iron 3 O dot all leads to the exactly same product iron 3 hydroxo R dot iron 3 hydroxo R dot. So, this is the pattern of the radical formation you can you can say the same thing for a copper oxo intermediate or a iron 4 oxo intermediate although these species in a cupril species in the in the enzymatic setup although proposed are are still doubtful in the synthetic setup. Recently some uh, some um, some evidences are coming, but still uh, one need to further further develop this chemistry in the synthetic setup so that uh, they are relevant can can be can be understood in enzymatic setup. Okay. So, overall I hope you are able to understand this mechanism. So, you are forming the succinate from this uh, alpha keto glutarate, you are getting rid of this carbon dioxide moiety from here and uh, I, I hope you understood that how it is attacking over there and this is O minus is forming and then, then this O minus overall is get oxidizing or um, so overall oxidizing iron 3 plus. Let me draw that step again. So, this is here a oxygen oxygen radical is attacking a keto center. Now, this keto center over there will form a radical overall it would be forming O, O, C, O let us say these are oxygen labeled maybe it would be easier to understood understand. So, that is there, these are there, this is iron center. Now, this so I am redrawing that over here. So, this is now attacking and this keto moieties are drawn over there, this oxygen oxygen iron is giving rise to a carbon center and O dot right. This is iron 3 plus, this is remain iron 3 plus and then, 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 then this iron 3 plus transfer one electron from here to give to oxygen which becomes iron 4 and O minus that is what I am trying to explain. Hope the electron transfer does not throw you off too much um, and you, you can count these electron stepwise without much of a problem. Let me draw that one more time very clearly for you and um, that is very simple process. I hope it is not getting complicated for you. So, you start with iron 3 super oxo iron 3 super oxo okay, you have a keto center attached with it with you. This is the one which is going to form the carbon dioxide in any case I am not drawing the rest of it. So, this intermediate goes on to attack this center right. So, this pi bond will cleave to give you this oxygen iron 3 remaining part remain constant right. So, that is what you see right. So, this is what you see along with the O bond O dot over there. So, this O dot over there is attacking 
and forming this, this radical and that radical forming in this bond, right. This is the new bond form and this is the radical that is coming over there. This radical and then pick up one more electron from this iron 3 overall to give you this center as iron 4 and this oxygen becomes O minus along with formation of this ox alkyl peroxo intermediate right. I hope you got it correct without any trouble in understanding right. So, this radical attack at this carbon center and that oxygen radical form one electron transfer from that center to give rise to iron 4 and this carboxylate. Anyway, let us move on what we have seen that these, uh, these alpha ketoglutarate can form iron oxo intermediate very interestingly and very simply then that can go on to react with the substrate to give you the substrate hydroxylation product. The twist here is if you do not have that you know 2 histidine 1, uh, one, one, uh, one carboxylate uh, intermediate 2 histidine and 1 aspartate intermediate the facial triad the, the facial triad so called facial triad intermediate if you do not have 2 histidine and 1 aspartate these 3 moiety if you do not have then you are uh, you are in for a quite exciting part and that is uh, just 2 histidine just 2 histidine and um, and and 1 x the halogen. So, this was aspartate in the last case now this is halogen this halogen will then be rea reactive with the radical center that is getting generated at iron. For instance, if you are uh, bringing the alpha ketoglutarate of course, at alpha ketoglutarate in substrate is sitting right over there iron 2 center is there reacts with oxygen binds with it and then form the iron 3 super oxo intermediate iron 3 super oxo intermediate right iron 3 super oxo intermediate then that attack on the carbonyl center of this and subsequently it form the iron 4 oxo with the succinate this is upon decarboxylation of this alpha ketoglutarate unit. Now, this iron 4 oxo unit as you can see over here iron 4 oxo unit over here um, then can abstract hydrogen atom just like what you have seen in the hydroxylation chemistry, but only difference is you have the halogen over there. Now, it can abstract hydrogen atom from the substrate to give the substrate radical intermediate along with the formation of OH. Now, there is a competition between X and OH where OH loses because this radical is close to this X and more importantly the reduction potential is helping out as well. Overall this X selectively transfer where there are no hydroxylated product is found. So, RCH2X is formed in this case RCH2Cl is formed if X equals chloride and if, if you have uh, uh, you know other things not present or or, 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 or you have difficulties then hydroxylation product may be formed. So, these alpha ketoglutarate dependent enzymes are I guess quite exciting not only they are capable of doing the hydroxylation chemistry they can also do the halogenation chemistry right. We have seen that as well. So, what we have seen so far that not only reversible dioxygen binding oxygen activation is also fascinating right and more fascinating I would say and more more um, more challenging more opportunities and uh, and and more more substrate scope can be involved iron porphyrin cytochrome p450 chemistry we have discussed already and summarize it dicopper center tyrosinase also we have discussed we have uh, discussed in the last few classes about mmos i'll briefly uh, mention mention these again so the main reaction we are trying to study is in case of mmo these are going to be a non heme iron center once again don't mix between the heme and non heme iron center these are going to be the non heme iron center methane is going to be converted into methanol with the help of the oxygen if you are having the leveled oxygen this is going to be leveled over there right that is correct. So, these are fascinating enzyme as you have seen there are going to be 2 iron center and these both the iron centers are 
are quite exciting over there. These are unsymmetrical as you see the coordination environment around this site is completely different compared to that one which is which is quite fascinating. You have one glutamate here, you have two glutamate over there right. Now, if you have seen the earlier mechanism once again the oxygen comes into the picture and um, earlier mechanism suggests that this oxygen will, will, will follow up all the way through to first of all transfer one electron, one electron from here and one electron from there to form the superoxo intermediate. This superoxo intermediate can again transfer one electron from there to give you the iron 3 2 minus. Um, this is the peroxo intermediate from there on this oxygen oxygen bond can be cleaved to give you the bismioxo where oxides are 2 O, O2 minus O2 minus iron 4 and iron 4. It was iron 3, this oxygen oxygen bond cleavage gives you iron 4, iron 4, 2 minus 2 minus. Now, the methanol comes and react with this Q intermediate, this is the intermediate Q which is responsible for the methane activation to give you the methanol product. There is a slight change or the revised mechanism um, subsequently, this revised mechanism tells that this iron 4 oxo or, or iron 4 dioxo intermediate will, will be capable of forming a new intermediate perhaps as you have seen this new intermediate is going to be iron 4 hydroxo oxo iron 3 intermediate. Although further characterizing this intermediate is not that very easy, but more importantly I, I believe that, um, that this peroxo intermediate can also be reacting with the methane substrate to give you the methanol along with the formation of diiron 3 dihydroxo intermediate. This peroxo and this bismuoxo, this is bismuoxo, mu oxo intermediates are quite exciting intermediate for this species. As you have as, as we have noticed there that these intermediates are quite exciting if you are following overall, if you are overall following if you are overall following up to here, this is a 30 milliseconds right, 30 millisecond time frame. If you are following overall from here to here, this is a 500 millisecond time frame right. So, this is forming, this intermediate is forming if you are following for 30 millisecond. If you are mixing oxygen with this reduced species within 30 millisecond or right at 30 millisecond, you can follow up this one. What happens to this? What is the decomposition product? And this has a characteristic band around 720 20 nanometer. Uh, if you are uh, mixing these species with oxygen and for waiting for 500 millisecond, this one you form and this is having a very characteristic band at 420 nanometer, right. These species are the one you can follow and then react it with, with methanol, uh, methane to give the methanol product, right. So, overall, um, so overall what you have seen previously is the decay of these say 420 peak or 720 peak can be rationalized can be followed quite easily to give the give the detailed kinetic studies. The detailed studies shows that it is actually more exciting than what we thought. Q the intermediate Q as, uh, as, as you have seen the bismuoxo intermediate can react with methane to give you a bond making and bond forming step over here where we have seen an oxo hydroxo species is generated. This oxo hydroxo intermediate can either go through a radical intermediate or through a concerted intermediate. Concerted intermediate is more challenging or more energy demanding therefore, we end up getting a more preferred pathway where this radical species are formed upon this hydroxo. Um, electron rearrangement, we get hydroxyl radical, this hydroxyl radical and the CH3 radical combines to give you the product. Of course, the alternative pathway is little bit more energy demanding, therefore, you do not perhaps follow this intermediate that very clearly. Right. So, this is a quick summary for these methane monooxygenases. You have seen also two types of substrate over there. One substrate is the methane and corresponding other substrate which will have the very high kinetic isotope effect right. So, these are having very high kinetic isotope effect as you can see over here. These are these highlighted ones right now are known as the class 1 substrate where methane approach could be could, could be a could be interesting and simple, but more importantly the CH activation 
is the rate limiting step. So, the diffusion of methane towards this Q intermediate. So, if you are looking and uh, looking at the Q intermediate which is nothing but iron 4 oxo iron 4 intermediate, this intermediate is, no, uh, is a approach of this with respect to this CH4 is very simple nothing no problem happens over there and this approach overall approach of CH4 with respect to bismioxo is not the rate limiting but this activation of this bond is rate limiting for this case of CH4 and CD4. And similarly as you have seen in case of acetonitrile and, and, and in case of nitromethane this approach is not problematic but CH activation is the most damaging or most, most difficult step. Um, on the other hand for, for the substrate like substrate like this ethane and, and the uh, methanol there this approach of this substrate towards this active site is the one which is critical or most challenging and therefore, we will end up get getting getting the diffusion control process. If you are remembering the previous uh, drawing carefully, you will, you will note that the for methane this is the black curve, this path is the diffusion of methane towards so, towards the iron 4 oxo species is not really problematic. So, this diffusion or pre orientation of, of the methane is happening quite easily, this can happen quite easily, but this is not so easy if, if you have approach of, of ethane and that is how the substrate specificity perhaps is obtained. See this, this, is, this is the same intermediate as this, but if you have H C uh, H2 CH2 that means uh, CH2 H that means the ethane this approach approach of this into uh, towards this is not that very easy and this diffusion control is, is, is becoming or diffusion step is becoming the rate determining step. As you can see from the uh, methane case this is not very high or uh, alternatively but the other step that is the CH activation step is much bigger and much stronger. More importantly for methane bond dissociation and energy is around 105 kcal per mole for for example, for ethane it would be 98 to 99 kcal per mole which makes a huge difference that CH bond dissociation becomes easier uh, and this is also perhaps one of the reason why ethane um, CH activation will not be problematic one, but reorientation or approach of the substrate diffusing the substrate with respect to the iron 4 oxo intermediate will be critical as you see there. So, for the methane case this is shorter, this is taller, for ethane case this is taller, this is shorter ok. That is the summary from the MMO. So, the substrate dependent chemistry we have seen. Another exciting part we have we were seeing the 4 manganese 1 calcium cluster. I think the first thing that should come into mind that these are microscopic rivers of the cytochrome um, cytochrome C oxidase which is hem copper oxidase which is responsible for converting oxygen into water. But in the photosystem you are converting water into oxygen. And the crystal structure as you have seen the gigantic crystal structure have, have many caveats in it, many problem in it, but nonetheless this is the 4 calcium 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 calcium, cent, uh, 4 manganese center and 1 calcium center that is over there. This can be redrawn like that, but although this crystal structure is known, but still this is completely questionable. The X-ray damage is the major reason why people do not believe that this is the structure for the oxygen evolving complex. So, what is the structure? Well, nobody knows till now. These are the these are the major structure that is proposed and believed to be still uh, still active. But nonetheless, although some some XAPS data are are there, but still people uh, people are debating on these. Some of these structure perhaps can be ruled out, but perhaps can still be existing in in the in the in the discussion. But uh, I think for time being we can or for since this debate is still on we cannot really rule out any of the structure completely, but these are the structure people believe are mainly happening. So, we have seen S0 oxidation state, we have seen S0 oxidation state, S0, S1, S2, S3 and S4 oxidation state. In each of the steps is oxidation happening, oxidation happening, oxidation happening and in the final step oxygen-oxygen bond formation 
is taking place. You have seen the, uh, the, the oxidation state dilemma between these two, these species are still uh, debatable, this is quite fixed, this is quite fixed, this is still debatable and finally this is the fully oxidized form. There are multiple line spectrum in the EPR which is uh, helping us in assigning some of those spectra always this uh, simulation of this band as well as the experimental observation has to be quite critically done otherwise the conclusion can be problematic. Different experimental studies are done to understand this intermediate in better, better, better respect or better, better clarity but still their problem exists in these cases. The oxygen-oxygen bond forming process as you would imagine that that is the most important step and that is uh, that is uh, that is that is the key point of discussion over here. Some believe that it is the calcium hydroxo which is I think is quite reasonable because calcium is the Lewis acid it activates the water molecule to make its hydroxide and this hydroxide and then can attack on this oxy center. But in other beliefs that calcium is not really part of but anyway that debate for another day this again ca calcium hydroxide either this hydroxo can attack on this bridged manganese oxo or the term terminal manganese oxo still that is questionable. I think we can we can we can we can perhaps leave as it is these questions are very difficult to solve at this point and we can move on because in the literature so far no clear understanding is obtained. Okay. So, at the end what we have in the picture is I think if anything you would like to Remember, I think this is the case you should remember, these next two slides you should remember. Uh, although this is questionable, but still this is the thing you should remember. What is happening over here? The core over there, this center remain constant. Okay. This is one of the proposal and this is something uh, uh, I, I believe is most likely closer to be the truth but again nobody has seen the real active site. So, what is happening over here is manganese aqua molecule is right over there okay. and it is in manganese 2 plus this is center is getting oxidized to manganese 2 to manganese 3 and then this manganese 3 is oxidized to manganese 4. Subsequently, this manganese 3 aqua complex further gets oxidized to manganese 4 hydroxo and finally to manganese 5 oxo which is the real electrophile we are looking at where calcium hydroxo can come and attack. If calcium hydroxo is attacking on this manganese 5 oxo the oxygen oxygen bond, uh, bond is formed I think job is done. Well again this is remaining a question mark over there but this is the one if you have to remember anything for the manganese uh, for calcium structure because it is so complicated you have to you have to remember something um, to better understand it there are there are caveats there are problems but I think this is something you should try to remember if the manganese for calcium uh, oxo structure is drawn for the oxygen oxygen bond formation I think this is the structure to be drawn okay let's moving on there is another exciting twist in this business and that is the formation of of the oxo radical from the tyrosine unit which is proposed in some of the cases in case of blondin uh, that this is the this is the oxy radical which is responsible for hydrogen atom abstraction for this manganese hydroxo species in S3. I think this is this is quite fascinating most likely to be the truth uh, or true but who knows uh, what is happening but overall this uh, phenol is forming as you can see over here and manganese 5 oxo is formed and calcium hydroxo is rightly coupled with the manganese center where this attack can take place and oxygen oxygen bond can, can be formed. Well, I hope you are able to make some sort of sense about this complex structure but you can read always more there are many references given a great chemical reviews and other reviews are available and you are feel you are free to study all those please do understand that these remains still complicated and many questions are still there uh, which 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 need to be addressed over the decades to come okay with this we'll see you soon in the final few classes very very soon okay thank you